Hi, we're here uh, at the uh, flow tank now, uh, and we're going to be uh, looking at how the uh, Unidata 6526 Starflow instrument um, can be set up in a flow tank, and, uh, and to see what to expect and how to operate the machine in a real life scenario. So um, currently we have um, our Unidata Starlog version 4 running, um, as you can see. And uh, we have a various uh, selection of icons or options down the left hand side of the screen. Um, pretty much what we've got is a star flow in a, um, in a fixed channel width. And water is flowing over the instrument. Uh, the water is approaching the star flow and over the top. And the depth is approximately 170, 180 millimeters deep. So what we'll do now is uh, we'll introduce you to um, to actually loading a scheme into the Starflow instrument and uh, and then monitoring what the Starflow is doing in real time. We'll give you an idea of how the, uh, how the machine operates. So we've actually um, pre-prepared a scheme. Uh, the scheme is a program which we need to send to the Starflow. It's like a computer program. And that tells the Starflow what to do uh, and, when to, uh, and when to do it. So um, if we uh, now go to the left-hand side of the screen and we press the select button, which will open up a screen with all your uh, predefined schemes in it. Now we've only got one scheme here called Quick, uh, which I've written just a few minutes ago. So we uh, double-click that, and that loads that uh, scheme into the computer buffer. It hasn't loaded it into the Starflow yet. What we need to do now is we need to program that scheme or upload the scheme to the Starflow instrument to make it work. So uh, over to the left-hand side of the screen again, and we press the program button. Now this will bring up a dialog screen to warn you that all data on the Starflow instrument will be lost. So what it does basically is that it resets all the counters, all the um, all the pointers and the software areas, uh, so that it uh, is ready for the new scheme. Now, if, for example, you had an old, um, if you had a star flow that still contained data on it and you wanted to keep it, you must download that data first. But this is just warning you that um, any data on the star flow instrument uh, will be overwritten. So anyway, uh, we don't worry about uh, what's on the star flow at the moment. We can press OK on this dialog. And we can see here, it opens another smaller window, uh, which has a progress bar indicating progress of the scheme upload. It's a very good idea to keep an eye on this screen when it's uploading. Uh, you must always see logger successfully reprogrammed. You can see that clearly here, um, and that means that the uh, Starflow instrument has been programmed successfully. If you see errors on there, you can try uploading again. Uh, if it still fails, then uh, you may have a problem somewhere. Uh, the most common problem is you must always maintain 12 volts or above on your uh, DC supply to the Starflow instrument. Currently, we're using a 12 volt battery, which is fully charged, so we have no problems there. Anyway, uh, we have successfully programmed the Starflow or sent the scheme to the Starflow, uh, and that should now be monitoring the uh, flow of water uh, in the flow tank. So we can now have a look at the data real time uh, by going to the left hand side of the screen again, pressing the test mode button. And this will bring up a series of parameters uh, which is coming back from the Starflow instrument. Uh, now, as we mentioned before, the uh, flow tank was running between 170 and 180 millimeters of water, uh, and we can see this, that here on the depth. Uh, the velocity is approximately 128 millimeters per second. Uh, the temperature of the water is about 21 degrees. So all these parameters are coming back from the Starflow. Um, and also it's been recorded on the Starflow memory chip too. So that um, we're just looking at it in real time. But the Starflow instrument is actually recording all of these details internally in its internal memory. And uh, we can actually download that data at a later date. Uh, we can do it in five minutes. We can do it in five hours. It doesn't matter. As long as you maintain the battery voltage on the star flow, it will continue to log in this particular mode. So um, if we continue through these uh, these values here, uh, it will give you a quartile value, which is basically the quality of the signal. Uh, we must try to maintain that uh, value there. 
below a value of say 100. Um, the lower this value here in quartile, the better the uh, quality of the signal is. Um, we have samples here, it's the actual number of reflectors that we can see in the water, 200 is good. Uh, we have a signal indication here, and that should just stay around about uh, 50, between 45 and 55, so that's about right. Um, it gives us a calculation of the, um, of the area of the water, uh, the flow rate, the flow, and the total flow. These are all parameters that are calculated by the star flow using your depth and velocity parameters, and also the, uh, the area. So as we can see, uh, we're getting uh, good value data here, good, uh, good indication that everything is working well. Um, this lower area here is what we call the log buffer, and that's basically what is being written to the star flow memory. Okay, and it also gives you a timestamp um, as well. So that uh, at this particular instant, this is what the star flow was seeing. Okay. We've pretty much done that one to death, so let's uh, now go to, uh, to unloading the Starflow instrument. As we said, the Starflow was actually recording all this information. Um, now we can come and uh, unload the data. So we press the unload uh, button here on the left-hand side of the screen. Um, at this stage, we only want a full unload or uh, a, uh, uh, a full unload of the data from the Starflow. We press the unload button. And here comes our data. We have less, we're around about a, uh, less than a K of data that has been uh, taken out of the star flow and put in onto the computer. It's been written to the computer. So um, it comes up with a dialog. Do you want to save the current unload position? In this case, we say no. Uh, we press OK on that. And now we have one file which has been written to the hard disk of the computer, um, which is called quick underscore zero one. That's a CSV file, which we can directly open in Excel. So we right-click the, uh, the particular file in question, and we can open that directly with Excel. And uh, this is a good way of uh, uh, looking at the data. Um, and it will give you also, with any luck, a graphical representation of what you've got back. So here's the data. Um, it's all looking good. Um, you can go through that and send it to a third-party software package if need be, or, or whatever you want to do with it. So that's uh, pretty much um, the basics of loading a scheme into a star flow, and unloading, and also viewing the data. If you just double-click this file, uh, you can see a graphical representation of the data using the internal Starlog v4 um, viewer. Um, you can use that as a quick guide to what the star flow is doing, but I tend to prefer to use Excel. Uh, it gives you greater um, manipulation of the data and so forth, and allows you to edit the data as well. So that's, um, that's the end of this little tutorial. I hope that's uh, helpful to you. Thanks very much for listening.